Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, I'm going to show you how to program drum grooves. I'm also going to teach you how to notate them as well. So here's the deal. Being able to program drums is extremely important for a lot of reasons. Number one, if you don't have a drummer available, you can actually get by and record sessions with it. As a matter of fact, there's plenty of country records that you've heard that have programmed drums all over them. A lot of famous hit songs, believe it or not. I use program drums to do demos. I use program drums to play along with, to do background tracks. It's really a handy skill to have. So let's get started. First thing I like to do, I open up my session. In this particular session, I'm gonna be using Superior Drums. It's made by the company TuneTrack, which also makes Easy Drummer 1 and 2. When I program drums, I like to do them this way. I take the drum track on a stereo audio track in Pro Tools. And then I use two MIDI tracks. And the reason I do this is because I put the cymbals on their own track and I put the rest of the drums on its own track. And the reason I do this is because many times when you're working on an arrangement and you want it to sound like a real drummer, you have to finesse the hi-hat. That's the thing that really makes it sound real is, is, is the hi-hat, the velocity. So, and I'll be adjusting the velocities on those. Also, if I want to change, if I want to say, oh, maybe in the last four bars here, it needs to go to a more open hi-hat or something if I'm going into a chorus. Really depends on what kind of track I'm doing. I'm going to show you some basic rock drum patterns and I'll show you some shuffles too. If you're notating a hip hop drum part, if you come up with an idea and you want to write it down, you'd use the exact same process. This is a drum notation legend that you'll need to read the drum patterns I've programmed. I'll put a PDF of it in the description. Okay, so let's start with this first groove. The first groove is a basic rock pattern. It's a simple eighth note hi-hat pattern with a kick on one and three and the snare on two and four. It's the same pattern as back in black. So I'm going to play it. I'm going to start it off. One, and I'm going to do the hi-hat first. And Now, one of the reasons I did accents like that is to make it sound more real. One of the main reasons that I put the cymbals on their own MIDI track is because of things like the hi-hat and the ride. This is where your dynamics come into place. You don't hit a hi-hat typically like this. We're gonna have all the same velocity. When you're playing a beat, if you're playing a basic rock beat, the hi-hat is going. It's hitting in different spots. It has different tones every place it hits and it has different accents. You can accent it all different ways. That's what's gonna make your drums sound realistic, is paying special attention to the high and the ride cymbal. So that will give you a lot more control over those patterns by having them on their own MIDI track and you can keep fine tuning them as you go. Since I'm only using eighth notes in this, I'm gonna use the eighth note subdivision in the grid. So now that I've put this down, I'm gonna go through and I'm actually gonna quantize it. I'll tell you why I'm gonna quantize it. I'm gonna quantize it because I want to be able to line these up since I'm gonna use this for demo purposes. So I'm gonna use an eighth note quantize. I'm gonna hit apply and it'll put everything right on grid. I was pretty on the click before, but I want it to be dead on because I'm gonna use this for demo purposes. Now. I'm gonna open up my second MIDI track, put it in record, I'm gonna do the kick and snare at the same time. So here's the kick, here's the snare. Okay, I'm gonna put those on two and four. It's gonna sound like this. Two, three, four. I'm gonna quickly go to here, highlight, quantize, boom, done. And here's my beat. That's pattern number one. Okay, pattern two is gonna be a variation of pattern one. This is the We Will Rock You pattern. Do, da, do, do, da. Kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. It's gonna have the same eighth note pattern, so I'm gonna program that first. Two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna quantize it, and then I'm gonna play the drum part. Two, three, four. I'm gonna quantize that. That's pattern two. Pattern three is based off a 16th note. It's got a 16th note uh, snare kick 
that you have on the second beat, so it's gonna be da dum. So it's like do do da dum da dum do da dum. Kick kick snare kick snare kick kick snare kick snare. Okay, but it's got eighth notes in the hi hat, so we're gonna play it like this. Now I'm gonna do the kick and snare. It's gonna be like this. I'll play it for you. It's That's the pattern. Now I'm going to change the quantization value on the kick and snare to 16th notes, since I have 16th notes in it. And it sounds like this. The next pattern I'm, I'm going to do, I'm actually just copying the hi-hat over, because once again, it's an eighth note hi-hat pattern, but it's the immigrant song pattern. So it's like, do, 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 da, do, da, do, 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 da, do, da. Okay? You play it. And it sounds like this. Okay, pattern five is kind of your typical Pearl Jam type drum pattern, or Jimi Hendrix or whatever. It's more of like a, a funk pattern. Okay, so it's got that little down later. So listen. sounds like this. The next pattern has a 16th note hi-hat, so I'm going to slow it way down since I can't move my finger that fast. Da, 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 da. This particular hi-hat part has a few different accents in it. Essentially, every time the kick hits, there's an accent on the hi-hat as well. So I'm going to go in and put the accents in. Okay, now I'm going to do something a little different. I'm actually going to hand program this next part with the kick and snare. So I have a kick on the downbeat, and I have a snare on the uh. So it's kick, e, and uh with the snare. Then I have the kick on the and of two. I'm going to move that over. I made the pattern double the length because I want to put in an open hi-hat accent. Now typically you'll have open hi-hat accents in the middle of a phrase, usually on the last 16th note or the last 8th note. If it's a 16th note pattern, a lot of times it'll be on the last 16th. If it's an 8th note pattern, it'll be on the last 8th note. Hat opens and then closes. So listen, it sounds like this. Here's the hat. The next pattern is a typical, like a funky pattern, but you'd hear it on the Pearl Jam uh, record, the first Pearl Jam record, 10. You hear it a lot. Doom, good da, doom, ba boom, da, ba boom, ba ba boom, ba boom, ba on. Okay? So listen to it. It goes like this. The next couple patterns are going to be shuffles. Now, typically shuffles are done with a hi-hat pattern based off a triplet. So it's, it's quarter note, eighth note, triplet. Da, 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 da. Okay, so I've made my grid into triplets, uh, triplet eighth notes. So I'm going to play along with it. Here we go. Now I'm going to play the kick and snare pattern to the hi-hat. Usually what I'll do is I will take down the volume by hand of the kick drum before each downbeat so it gives it more feel. It sounds more human. Listen. All these little feel things by adjusting those velocities bring in different samples and will make it sound more realistic. The last tune I'm programming is the beat from Rosanna by Toto, which is a variation on the Purdy Shuffle, essentially. It's the same eighth note triplet hi-hat pattern that we've had. With a little grace note right there. 
That's a very classic shuffle feel. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book, you can write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.